Welcome back to Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Creatine, the magic supplement. What is it? What does it do? What are some of the benefits? How is it manufactured? And wait till the end where we go over dosing for creatine. So let's get right into it. Creatine is an amino acid found in skeletal muscle tissue as free creatine and phosphocreatine. Creatine needs to be converted, so you need creatine kinase, a little bit of magnesium to go to phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine is what really drives the energy production in our muscle tissue. So, phosphocreatine is utilized in the adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, creatine phosphate, CP, energy system. Gets dumped into the system and it produces rapid energy, so you can jump higher, run faster, and lift more, right? And endurance. Creatine is also found in high levels in the central nervous system, basically brain and spinal cord, and approximately half is produced from the liver, kidney, and pancreas, so your body's ability to produce creatine, and about half is from food, okay? So, how is creatine produced? Sodium sarcosinate plus cyanamide equals creatine, okay? The best form and most researched form is creatine monohydrate. So this is relatively cheap to get, and you can use uh, creatine in a variety of different ways to, to get benefits. So what are some of the benefits? Increased strength and performance in muscle, increases ATP or energy of the cell, increases muscle mass by drawing water into the cell, and then also promotes muscle protein synthesis. So it's good for exercise recovery. So after exercise, creatine is utilized to build muscle. Important for cognitive and brain health as well. Basically improves ATP for mental energy and cognitive function. So you can go longer in terms of intensive cognitive tasks. It's neuroprotective, so for brain injury and neurodegeneration, things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, uh, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It also increases endurance and reduces fatigue. So it's great for endurance athletes that go for like a triathlon and high mental demand, okay? So if you have intensive cognitive function or a college student, you gotta study many hours to get through a program, it's really good for that. Aging mitigates sarcopenia or muscle loss. You need to maintain muscle in order to function and move correctly. So it improves function, uh, physical function overall. It's also good for And now, if you find our videos informative and valuable, we have a free transformative health program, which includes our foundational modules, along with Q&A, where you can ask questions about your health. So let's get right into the rest of it. Mood and mental health helps with depression, enhanced brain energy, combats mental fatigue, and sleep deprivation. What this means is that because you have energy production or improved energy production, it may help with depression. It combats fatigue even when you have sleep deprivation. So you want to get three hours of sleep, four hours of sleep. It might be important to take that in order to help mental fatigue the following day. It improves bone health. Creatine has been shown with, along with exercise to improve bone density and bone health. There's a blood sugar regulation improvement, improves insulin sensitivity, and reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes. Brain development in children, uh, especially with traumatic brain injuries and or developmental disorders. So you can utilize creatine in children in order to help brain development. It also has an anti-inflammatory effect, inhibits pro-inflammatory cytokine, and reduces what we call ROS, or reactive oxygen species. Now, let's get to the dosing 
of creatine. So you can do this a, a variety of different ways, okay? But you can do what we call a loading phase. This is 20 grams of uh, creatine per day in divided doses. The purpose of this is to saturate the muscle tissue with creatine, right? And you do it for about five to seven days in order to saturate the muscle tissue. Then you go into a maintenance phase, and that maintenance phase might be three to five grams per day, right? If you skip the loading phase, it might take just maybe three or four weeks to get saturation, but you can just go straight into a maintenance phase and just take it on a daily basis. Now, timing, does it matter? This may be a slight incremental improvement in absorption of creatine, but essentially you just need to take it on a daily basis to reach saturation. So incrementally may be improved post-exercise. A little uh, a sugar with it, a little juice with it may help improve that. And the reason is post-meal, you have an insulin spike and the insulin can help drive creatine into the muscle uh, tissue. So post-exercise with a little carbohydrate may improve absorption of creatine. However, you can just take it. Really, at the end of the day, you just need to take it on a daily basis. Now, you also need to hydrate because it does increase water uptake into the muscle tissue. So make sure you're fully hydrated. Like I said before, creatine monohydrate is the most researched uh, and it's very cheap to get. You don't need to go out and get very expensive products. Um, side effects, in high doses, you may have a little GI disturbance, maybe some you know, gas or bloating or you know, loose stool. Okay? There's one study that says it, it increased hair loss uh, and the way they did it was that increases DHT or dihydroxytestosterone. It was only one study, and I believe it's probably not the case, um, but there was one study. If you have kidney disease, okay, um, you want to check something called C-statin-C, which is an indication for kidney disease. If you work out hard and you do a lot of exercise and you have thick musculature, you're going to have an elevation of what we call creatinine, okay, and it's very common to see that in thickly muscled individuals. Creatinine can also go up in people who have kidney disease. So if you see an elevation of this marker in your blood test, I would highly recommend checking C-statin-C because likely if you're a young individual, thickly muscled, your C-statin-C will be completely normal and you do not have kidney disease. So it's important to distinguish between kidney disease and an elevation of just creatinine uh, maybe due to thick musculature or supplementation with creatine. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.